Hello and welcome to this video on specialisation and the division of labour. In this video we're going to look at what is meant by specialisation and division of labour, look at the advantages and disadvantages of this approach to organising an economy and then understand the function of money in a specialised economy. So let's imagine way back maybe a few hundred years ago if you wanted all the goods and services that you wanted it'd be very much up to you to produce them yourself you'd be self-sufficient if you wanted a house you would build it yourself if you wanted clothes you would make them if you wanted food you would go out and hunt them now ask yourself is that the way the modern economy is organized do people provide all the goods and services that they want no in the world in which we live workers tend to do one specific task very well and then they trade their task or their skill with other people's tasks or skills to get all the goods and services that they need. So some people are very good at house building, some people are very good at making food and they trade with each other to uh, provide all the goods and services that they need. And this is quite a recent uh, development in the history of mankind if you were uh, and that's what we're going to look at today. And this phenomenon is known as specialization. So specialization is a system where Economic agents, households, are not self-sufficient, but they just specialise in one particular item, become very good at it, and then trade that item with other people. This can apply to economies that focus maybe on just on shipbuilding, or economies that focus maybe just on financial services, and also to individuals. Within businesses themselves, they may also split up tasks so that each person focuses on a particular role, and that is called the division of labour. So again, these are two important definitions and let's make sure that we've got both of these down in our notes once we have. Let's move on. Now, specialisation in the division of labour um, sounds quite obvious to us these days, but actually uh, as an idea to not be self-sufficient with everything only came about really in the late 1700s. And it was first noted by a Scottish economist called Adam Smith in his book, The Wealth of Nations. And he promoted specialisation by individuals and argued there'd be an enormous increase in productivity. And the reason for that is if you focus on a narrow range of tasks, you become very skillful at doing them. If I try to make my own food, build my own house, make my own clothes, I'll never develop a really good skill in any of those areas. But if I just focus on one particular skill like teaching, I might become quite good and therefore uh, I can be more productive. As a result of being just focusing on one task, I can develop tools that are specialist and help me to save costs and do things more efficiently. I can do things a lot quicker if I'm just doing one particular task over and over again. And also I can go and do the particular task that I'm best suited to in terms of my skill set. A famous example he gave to illustrate this was um, a pin factory in the late 1700s in Britain. The average man on the street, if you ask him to make a pin from start to finish, could barely make a pin in one day. But if you were to take the task and split each task and give each particular person one task in the process of making a pin, he argued that you could be a lot more efficient. This is a quote of his um, outlining all the different jobs that are involved in making a pin. So straightening up the wire, cutting it, putting the head on top of the pin. Um, and he said, if you make one person responsible for each stage and they become highly specialised, highly skilled at that role, you could see a large increase in productivity. He argued that one factory of 10 men could produce 48,000 pins in a day, compared to just 10 pins that would be made if you had 10 people trying to just do it themselves. A 400,000% increase in productivity. And if you extend this over the economy as a whole, there'd be a large increase in the amount that's produced. So what are the benefits of specialisation? Well, workers can gain greater skills, and production can become more efficient, there's going to be less time spent making products and less time wasted. More can be produced overall, that's one of the key ones. More can be produced and resources can be used more efficiently. Are there any drawbacks to just doing one particular task all the time? Well, it can get a bit tedious and boring for the workers. You might feel a bit alienated if your one job is just to bash a nail on a conveyor belt on a production line. You might feel like your sort of psychological needs are not being met. People might therefore not want to work. And also there's only so much specialisation that can take place. There's only so much division of labour that can take place to you get down to just one basic task. Sometimes economies or individuals become what we call over specialised. And that is where you're very dependent on a particular skill or particular role for your income. So this might apply to a country that's very uh, dependent on, for example, coal mining. And if the coal mining reserves run out, 
then they haven't got any skills to earn an income from any alternative sources. Again, if your country is very specialised and let's say they only produce, uh, focus on farming, uh, only very dependent on wheat farming, then if there's a, a low price for wheat, it's going to affect the entire economy. They, they haven't got that diversification. Likewise, people can, uh, economies can be very dependent on heavy manufacturing and if that moves to another country, then they're left without uh, any jobs. Also, you become very susceptible to anything you're depending on. If, you, if your economy if you, or your business is a plastics manufacturer, then you're very dependent on the, the oil price, for example. And if that was to change, that would have a, a very significant effect on your business. If you weren't a specialised business or economy, then it wouldn't have such a big effect. So if we are just producing one particular thing each, you know, one person is being a teacher and one person is being a mechanic and one person is being an engineer, how do we ensure that we can still get all the different things that we want, still get shelter, still get food, still get clothing, education, all these sorts of things. Well, we could just swap them, just barter. I will give you an hour's tuition if you come and mend my house. I will give you an item of clothing if you in return give me some food. But that is very difficult. It's hard to know the value of one versus the other and so on. And so that gives rise to the existence of money in our economy. And as people become less self-sufficient, they need to exchange goods. And this gives rise to the use of money in an economy. So you might want to pause the video for a second and think, you know, what functions do, does money serve in our economy? Why do we have money? Well, there are four functions of money that we need to be aware of. First of all, it is a medium of exchange. It's used in payments for goods and services. So it allows us to say, right, well, I'll give you tuition for 40 euros and I can then go out to the shops and buy some shoes for 40 euros. I can use that to make uh, exchange to smooth the flow of exchanges. The second is a unit of account. So I can easily compare things. Well, 40 euros of uh, tuition is worth more than 30 euros of uh, shoes. I will also accept it as deferred payments. This is quite useful if I say, right, well, I'll teach you now and you can pay me in one week. Uh, instead of having to kind of barter or give me something physical in one week, you can defer payment and, and use money to settle that transaction a week later. And the final one is money is useful as a store of value. Money can uh, be put in the bank, money can be held in cash and it will retain its value. Whereas if I was to provide a lesson for food and I receive food, that's not going to retain its value. It's eventually going to go off and I'd be left with nothing. So in this video, we've looked at specialization division of labor, the advantages and disadvantages of that approach. And then lastly, the function of money in a specialized economy. Well done, that's the end of the video.